The supplies that we want to have on hand in order to uh, flush our printer would be some paper towels, at least two liters of flushing solution, some kind of empty bottles for waste. We would like to have some empty ink bottles or some old ink bottles that still have some residual ink in them that we can pour the ink out of the ink bottles back into the original ink bottles. And the same thing with the white ink. We want to have a container that we can put the white ink into. We don't want to waste any of this color or white ink, so we want to have nice, pristine, clean vessels to put them into. We start the flushing procedure by initially disconnecting the electrical connection on the white ink pod, making sure we have a couple of paper towels on hand, and we can disconnect the stirring mechanism, the paddle up top, and now we're going to remove the white ink bottle. And the reason we wanted the paper towels were simply when we take this out so it doesn't drip all over. So we have something to set this down into. I'm now going to take my white ink, lift the bottle out, and just set this down in here for a moment. I'm now going to take my white ink bottle, and I'm just going to pour this carefully back into the bottle. We need a little more room, so let me grab another bottle. And we'll pour the remaining amount into the other bottle. We're now going to take the white ink container and we are going to rinse it out with hot water. After we've rinsed out the white ink bottle, you want to make sure there's absolutely no moisture left in here. So you want to get a paper towel in there and you want to wipe it out to ensure it is perfectly dry. Once we've dried that thoroughly, now we want to take a little bit of the flushing solution or cleaning solution would work as well and we want to put a little on a paper towel and we want to wipe off the paddle and the tubes that go down into the white ink bottle. You can see the stirrer, when it's clean, is clear plastic. You can also wipe down the lid, make sure there's no residual ink on the lid. Okay, that's nice and clean now. Now we're going to take our flushing solution and fill up our clean white bottle. And if we look carefully at the two tubes coming in, this tube here is the tube that comes from the pump 
and this tube here is the return line. So we want to make sure that we have the return line going into a waste bottle so that we can pump out any residual white ink that we might have in here. So we're going to start by lifting this up, pulling any slack from the bottom, and I'm going to take my stirrer and I'm going to put it back in my flushing solution. I am going to disconnect what I believe to be the return line and I'm going to put this into a waste container and then I am going to plug in the electrical connection which will turn on the peristolic pump and circulate the white ink. What's going to happen is the solution is going to be drawn in from this tube, cleaning it out, and forcing all of that ink out on this side. And since I see this dripping like this, I know for sure now that that in fact is the return line so that I know that I'm doing this properly. And we can see that it is drawing from this side. So this is definitely the supply side and this is the return line. I'm going to continue to do this now until the solution coming out of here is no longer white and it's the green color of the flushing solution. So as we're doing this procedure, we always want to keep an eye on the level of this liquid. Remember, the tubes only come down to about here. So it's a good idea at this point to take this out and tilt this to make sure that the tube on that side is still in the liquid. And if you look at the tubing now, it's a little frosty, but it's almost clear. It's not white like it used to be. So we'll continue to do this until we get air back in this line which I'm getting air right now. So now that I have air coming in, I know that's as much liquid as I can draw out. So now we will disconnect the power supply. I will reconnect this tube. And I am going to take the remaining amount of flushing solution that's in here, which has been slightly contaminated by the white ink that dripped out of the tubes, and I am going to discard this remaining amount. So again, using a paper towel so that we don't get this all over. We'll just set this in here like this momentarily, and we will discard the remaining amount of flushing solution, you can see how frosty white it is. Now that we've discarded the remaining amount of flushing solution and rinsed the bottle out, we need to make sure that we dry it out just like we did before, make sure there's no residual liquid left in here. And now we are going to fill it up with clean flushing solution. Assemble. Tighten it back up. And now we can plug in the electrical connection again.
we're going to take the remaining amount of flushing solution and we are going to take our empty bottles and our paper towels and using the empty bottles we are going to fill these with clean flushing solution now that we've filled our empty bottles with flushing solution we're just going to take the lids off of our colors one at a time let it drip and after most of the ink drips off we're going to grab a paper towel and we're going to wipe that tube down and wipe off the inside of the lid to a certain extent now we're going to take one of the bottles of flushing solution And we're going to put that in there like that. And I want to make sure that I cap this so I do keep the lids. And I'm going to continue this process for all of the colors. So now that we've done the other three, we're on our last one here. After we've filled up all the bottles with our flushing solution, now we want to put the machine into a few power cleanings. We do that by going into menu. We use the forward button to find maintenance. Then we hit menu. We use the forward button to find the power cleaning. We hit menu to go into the power cleaning and menu for yes to start it. This is the one that you are going to be required to raise and lower the levers as the machine instructs us to. We are going to do these power cleanings anywhere from three to ten of them until the lines are nice and clean. There are a couple very important things to remember when we're doing this. The first thing is after every power cleaning make sure you empty the waste bottle on the side of the machine because that is going to fill up very quickly. We also want to look at the back of the machine and keep an eye on the flushing solution levels in the white bottle as well as inside the color bottle. You are going to have to frequently fill them up so that the machine can perform the power cleanings properly. After doing 
a few power cleanings. We want to do those until when we look at the tubing, I'll open the cover so the camera can see this better. If we look at the tubing inside where the printhead is, we see that it looks fairly clear. There's a little bit of staining, but that's from the ink sitting in the lines. Those lines look actually very clear. When it's to that point, we want to check to see if we're done. The way we do that is we are going to empty the waste tank. And we will empty it out and rinse it out. After we've rinsed out the bottle real good, we're going to wipe it out. At this point in time, we really want to try and get this bottle pretty clean. Because now what we're going to do is we are going to put the machine into a couple of regular head cleanings, about two of them. So we do that by holding the menu button for three seconds. And just to reiterate that, I'm going to do two of these right now. So after this one's done, I'll start a second one. After the second standard head cleaning, we're going to check out the liquid that's in the waste bottle. That's why we wanted to make sure it was nice and clean. If the liquid in here looks nice and clear, like regular flushing solution, we know that we're done. In this case, it does not it's still dirty so now we're gonna do a couple more head cleanings since that still wasn't clear we would have done two or three more power cleanings followed by a couple more head cleanings after cleaning out the container so always remember after you do the power cleanings empty out and clean out the waste bottle before you do your two head cleanings because after the head cleanings that's when we want to inspect the liquid And now when we look in here, we see we have liquid that actually looks just like the original flushing solution. Now the flushing process is completed.